Now, when we talk of prevention of corrosion, what can be done? It can be done in two ways. Either prevent the reaction of metal with air. How we can prevent the reaction of metal with air? As I said, it can be painted and greased. Or there is another way. What is the way? We can put a, another layer of another metal over the original metal. What may happen? The paint may come out sometimes. The grease may also sometimes come out. But the another layer will stay for a longer time. These are the two ways we can prevent the corrosion. What are the various type names of these ways to prevent corrosion? Now we will see one by one. First is galvanization. Now what is galvanization? It's a thin layer of zinc which is poured over the element. A thin layer of zinc is poured over the element and this zinc covers the article and thus prevents the reaction of air with the element. And this process is called galvanization. It is generally used for iron. All the iron articles, even the nails which we see iron nails, they are quite shiny. Actually they have a layer of zinc over it and when we put a layer of zinc over any iron article it is called as galvanization. Put a layer of zinc. Second way is called as tinning. Now, as the name suggests a layer of tin, a tin is another element, a layer of tin is put over the articles to prevent the reaction of oxygen with the element. Now we have seen the tinned food. We eat tinned food. If you remove the cover, you will see a shiny substance inside. And that tin is used because it, it is undergoing a tinning reaction which is over another element. Why we are tinning? Tinning of tin cans is very common example. Tin does not react with the food articles and also the base of the other element can be used over which the tinning has been done and this that's why this process is called as tinning. Third process which prevents corrosion is electroplating. Now what is electroplating? As the name suggests electro means use of electric current. And plating means putting a layer on something. Now we get artificial jewellery. We get artificial jewellery from right from 100 rupees to 1000 rupees. And it looks like gold and silver. But it is actually not gold and silver. Why it is shining like gold? Because it is electroplated. All artificial jewellery which we want to purchase for less amount, it is plated with the golden color or it is plated with the silver color by the use of electric current and that is why it shines very nicely. Now all the party, all the articles in the small machines also are electroplated. There is another use of electroplating that means it is preventing corrosion. Besides giving a shine to the substance as in the case of jewelry, it is also preventing corrosion. Next is anodizing. If you remember when we were studying the aluminium part that is aluminium reacting with oxygen we came across this word anodizing. Anodizing is nothing but a putting a layer of oxide of aluminium over any article. I had told you earlier also, if I take an aluminium kadai, you will see it is shining. How that shine remains? How it does not get corroded? Aluminium kadai does not get corroded. Why? Because aluminium has the ability of forming oxide. Now, aluminium oxide, once it forms, it does not allow the further reaction of oxygen with aluminium. 
that means it has the benefit that we can put a layer of aluminium oxide and further corrosion is stopped. This is done by electric current and aluminium article which has to be anodized is made into anode and then this article is coated with aluminium oxide. This process is called as anodizing. This anodizing prevents the corrosion of aluminium. We are talking here basically of aluminium in this anodizing part. And last part, last type of you know, how we can prevent corrosion is called as alloying. Now we are using stainless steel at home. What is stainless steel? What is it made up of? You will say it is made up of iron. But if it was only iron, it would rust. Yes, it will stick to magnet. But we are seeing that stainless steel doesn't stick to magnet. Stainless steel can be easily cleaned. Stainless steel doesn't corrode. Now what can be the reason for it? Stainless steel is an alloy. Now what is an alloy? Alloy is when we mix two or three types of elements in different proportion and we are making a new type of element with different elements in it. Now, I was talking about stainless steel. Stainless steel basically contain iron. It contains main iron. Along with it, cobalt and nickel is added in definite proportion. This is the formula of cobalt CO and this is the formula of nickel Ni. When I add these two elements to iron, iron cannot rust because these two are preventing its rusting. And this is the benefit of making an alloy. From the name stainless steel, what do you understand? Stain means dag lagna. When we use stainless steel articles, uske pa koi dal nahi lagta hai. That means that is why the name stainless steel is put. And this does not rust, it does not corrode, it does not have any stain also. This is the benefit of alloying. You must have heard another two alloy names. Brass and bronze. You must have seen the statues made from brass and bronze. The brown colored statues are you can see anywhere in the museums. They are made from brass and bronze. These are also the examples of alloys. What is the what is present in brass? The brass contain copper and zinc. That means in a definite proportion copper and zinc is taken to make an alloy which is called as brass. And what about bronze? Bronze contain copper and tin. So these are the common examples of alloys. Alloying is one of the ways to prevent corrosion. So this, these all types of processes can be used to prevent corrosion of metals. We have understood the lesson on metals and non-metals. Let's take a recap of what we have understood till now. Elements are divided into metals and non-metals. Metals have various properties like physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties are those which we can see, which we can observe. What were they? Metals have luster, that means shine. Metals are malleable and ductile. That means metals can be converted into sheet in malleability and they can be converted into wires in ductility. Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. That means metals can allow the electric current to pass through them like copper, silver, gold, aluminium. Metals are solids. Generally we see metals are solids. but in case of mercury and gallium, this is an exception. Mercury and gallium are in liquid state. And that's why they are not solid, they are liquid state. These are the general characteristic features of metals. 
which are physical properties. If we go through chemical properties, we see that when metals react with air, it forms oxides. For example, sodium reacts with oxygen forming sodium oxide. Now, this sodium oxide or oxides, they are always basic in nature. Second property which we saw was how metals reacted with water to produce hydrogen gas. All the metals generally react in different different ways. Sodium reacts vigorously, magnesium reacts slowly and makes the magnesium float on water. This is because hydrogen is evolved. Third chemical property which we saw was how metals reacted with acids. Acid when react with metal it forms its salt and also hydrogen gas. How this hydrogen gas can be tested? I have told you if you remember if I test it with the burning splinter brought near it will burn with a pop sound and that is the indication that hydrogen is produced. This, these were the chemical properties which we saw. What about non-metals? Non-metals physical properties, we will just go through and recap. Non-metals do not have any shine. They are not lustrous except their iodine which is quite shiny. They are not ductile, they are not malleable. That means what? They cannot be changed into sheets, they cannot be changed into wires. They are generally solid and in gaseous state. But again there is an exception. Bromine is in a liquid state. Non-metals are very poor conductors of electricity. Almost they do not conduct electricity. But there is a non-metal on carbon which is also called graphite which is a very good conductor of electricity. This graphite is coated in the electric plugs also. These are the physical properties which we saw in non-metals. What about the chemical properties? Remember, non-metals react with water to form acidic oxide. Now here, in the case of metal, they reacted with water, air to form basic oxide. Here, they react with water to form acidic oxides. Non-metals react with metal to form ionic compounds. Like example, sodium chloride. Sodium was a metal, chlorine was a non-metal, magnesium chloride, magnesium was a metal, chlorine was a non-metal and they form ionic compounds. Non-metals react with acid to form salt and water in the same way as the metals. So this is general flow chart which will make you learn easily and remember the physical and chemical properties of metals and non-metals. We have seen how extraction of metals can be done by ores. But let's take a recap of all the different methods we have understood. Metals can be extracted from their ores. Ores can be of three types. E either it can be an oxide ore or a sulphide ore or a carbonate ore. And for some metals, it will be in a free state. We, have, we can divide all the metals into three categories high reactivity metals medium reactivity metals and low reactivity metals high reactivity metals can be extracted by electrolysis that means the electricity can pass through the molten ore of which elements the high reactive elements like sodium magnesium aluminium calcium all these are ores through which we can pass electricity and we can directly get metal here. Instead of, we don't have to follow other processes. Then we come to the medium reactivity metals. Medium reactivity metals, as I said, are of two types. Carbonate ores and sulphide ores. Carbonate ores cannot be converted directly to the metals or sulphide ores also cannot be converted directly to the metals. So what to do? It's easier to convert first carbonate ores to oxide ores. And these oxide ores can be converted further to metals. Carbonate ores are reduced by the process known as calcination. And sulphide ores are reduced 
by the process known as roasting method. Both the processes calcination and roasting form oxide ores and this oxide ores can be further reduced to metal by using reducing agent. We had used coke as a reducing agent for converting zinc oxide to zinc. Then we come to low reactivity metals. These low reactivity metals are present in the sulphide ores, in the form of sulphide ores. These sulphide ores again cannot be directly changed into metals. It has to get converted to oxide ores. So again here roasting will be done and then it will be reduced to metals by simply heating it. All these processes will form, will give you the metal which is required. Now these metals once it is obtained, it can undergo corrosion due to the reaction with atmospheric components. And there are various ways of prevention of this corrosion. We had learned the greasing and painting are important for preventing corrosion. Galvanizing, anodizing, alloying, tinning are some of the methods of corrosion. This is how the extraction of metals from its ore can be done.